Hi guys, hope you're all okay. Welcome back to the channel. Thanks for joining me for another video. This is part one in a series of videos on the Retivis RT91. So in this video, we're just going to look inside the box. We're going to look at setting it up and just basic operation. And then in part two, we'll actually go out into the field and do some tests with this thing. So the Retivis RT91, this is something I've not actually come across before. It's basically a handheld radio power amplifier. Um, so there may be times where you're out in the field with radios such as these ones that I've got here. So this is the uh, Retivis uh, RT50 and the Retivis RT3S or any other handheld radio. And, you know, the, usually the 5 or sometimes even 10 watts that these radios put out is more than adequate for the purpose that they're being used for. But you may come across a time where you do need that boost in power. Uh, power isn't always everything, but if you've got a decent antenna and conditions uh, are right, then the additional bit of power can help massively. Um, and as I say, sometimes the, the 5 watts that these radios um, pack, or some of the other radios that you can get pack, just, just may not cut it for the uh, desired purpose. And that's where the Retivis RT91 comes into play. So. Um, what we'll do is we'll just look at some of the features of um, this device and then we'll, we'll actually set it up uh, before I go and do any tests. So as you can see it's quite portable and lightweight, it's um, pretty small um, compared to some of the uh, like main radios that you, uh, that you can use. So it has the advantage over having a bigger radio in the car or out portable and it's basically a wide coverage RF power amplifier for handheld radio equipment uh, for both digital and analogue. It's dual mode uh, digital analog, so it automatically recognizes digital and analog systems. It does have quite a high output power of up to 30 watts, so when you compare that to the 5, 6, 8 or 10 watt handles that are around on the market, it um, definitely packs a bit of a punch. Um, the size is, is quite small on this thing, it's, it's not a big unit at all, uh, as you can see compared to the microphone there, it's, it's not a big unit at all and its size makes it perfect um, for, you know, the perfect companion for being out in the field and field operations without any, added, uh, any real added weight. There are some safety precautions on this, so it does include voltage spike suppression, um, over temperature protection, RF sensing, and it does have an automatic power control and, of course, harmonic filters as well. So it's um, it, it's there's some protection there should uh, should things go wrong. Um, it does have a large built-in speaker and microphone socket, so it operates its own microphone rather than the radios. And there's a status indicator on there, so it lets you know the working status of the device itself. So some quite decent um, features and benefits there on this device. So I think what we'll do is we'll get it out of the box and we'll just go through the basic setup on this thing. Okay, so if we have a look inside the box, and I've not actually had a chance to have a proper look at this yet, but if we have a look inside the box, uh, you can see we've got a microphone there. So quite a, a large chunky microphone with an RJ plug on there and it's got a microphone holder on the back so that um, eliminates the use of the radio's microphone. Uh, we've also got a microphone clip with a couple of screws so you can mount this onto the dashboard or uh, onto a desk or a shelf wherever you need it. We've got a radio interface and an RF interface in there, so you've got a um, dual-headed connector there for connecting your handheld radio to the amplifier, and you've got a connector there for connecting the radio's uh, antenna output into the uh, amplifier itself. We've got a user manual here, so um, it just gives you um, just some bits around operation, uh, RF control, the front panel, um, just some little features. So uh, we'll have a look at this um, in a second. Wow. So we've got the amplifier there itself. So as you can see, compared to a handheld, it's quite a small little, uh, quite a small little device. And um, we'll come to that in a second. Got a power lead for plugging into a car cigarette lighter, and that just goes into the back of the uh, amplifier. Got a mounting bracket and a couple of thumb screws and a little uh, pigtail connector in there as well. So yeah, plenty going on inside the box there guys. Okay, so if we just have a look at this user manual. 
So it says the amplifier can be used on analog FM, uh, P25, C4 FM, which is Fusion, NXDN, IDIS, DPMR, and MPT1327. And it also supports, obviously, DMR and P25. Um, okay, features include high output power, 20 to, oh, to 40 watts. So um, if you put 2 watts in, you get 20 watts out. If you put 3 watts in, you get 30 watts out. If you put 4 watts in, you get 35 watts out. And if you put 6 watts in, you get 40 out. So, um, yeah, so it knows how much is going in and gives the relevant um, output power uh, based on that. So that's uh, that's quite good. And there's just some other bits and pieces of information in the uh, in the user manual there. Okay, so if we actually have a look at the amplifier itself, um, this is the model RT91, uh, as we said, and it's um, has an input power of two to six watts with the output power of 30 to 40 watts, as we said, and the um, supply voltage on this is 13.8 volts, so pretty standard is what you're going to get out of a car or a radio power supply, and the frequency coverage is 400 to 480 megahertz. So, yeah. So on the front we've got an on-off button there, we've got a power LED, we've got a TX LED and an alarm LED, um, we've got a microphone input and we've got the control um, socket there for linking to the radio. And then on the back we've got an RF in um, connector there, an SMA connector, so that basically connects to the radio and then back to the uh, amplifier. We've got the fused DC 13.8 volt um, plug on the back there and then a PL259 plug uh, for plugging an external antenna in so yeah it does it's a weighty little item it feels uh, nice and solid um, we've also got the power connector here so we'll just plug that in so that would then plug into a um, car cigarette lighter we've got the microphone here so what we'll do is we'll just plug that into the front like so and then We've got the interface cable between the radio itself and um, the amplifier. So if we plug that into the front here, so into the control port, and then we'll plug that into the rest of this RT3 here. And then finally, if we just take the antenna off this radio, We can plug in the RF cable, which carries the output power from the radio itself straight into the uh, amplifier. Okay, so that's the, that is the basic actual basic setup on on this thing. Um, so we've got the basically, if we if we get these cables in order, we've got a cable coming off here that goes to the power supply or to your cigarette lighter in your car. We've got an RF cable here that basically takes RF out of the radio into the amplifier for it to be sent through the amplifier and back out here. We've got an interface cable that runs from the radio's PTT uh, microphone and programming cable socket there straight into the front of the amplifier itself and what that'll do is when this microphone keys up that will then key the radio. And then the only last thing to do is to plug in an external antenna and that just goes on the back. like so and with that you're pretty much ready to go so you just apply power and then when you turn the amplifier on turn the radio on you just select your frequency and you're good to go and what that'll do is when you keep this microphone your radio that would usually put five or six watts out will actually put 30 to 40 watts out so yeah that's set up guys pretty straightforward quite simple um i'm looking forward to going out and testing this with a friend of mine who's an m0 um, so we'll, we'll do some testing with this and just see how well it actually performs. I've got no uh, reason to think that it wouldn't perform well, um, especially if you're using it with quite a decent, you know, if you use it with a decent quality radio, um, you're not going to have any issues. I wouldn't um, want to use this with, with a cheap and nasty radio. I would use this with something decent because obviously some other other radios do tend to have spurious harmonics and things like that. And, and um, obviously running the high power on those things can cause interference and that. But like I say, we've got this connected to the uh, Retivis RT3 here, which is a, a decent quality radio. And um, yeah, I think this is, this is going to be fun, guys. So... That was just a quick sort of show of the setup on um, on this thing. I think what we'll do is we'll leave it there for now, but 
definitely stay tuned i'm going to be out testing this very very soon so we'll uh, come back with our findings on that but yeah i'm looking forward to testing it it does look uh, does look quite good so um, yeah right any thoughts comments suggestions or questions on this device guys or any of the other videos or the channel itself drop them in the box below and i'll get back to you if you enjoyed this video give it a thumbs up and it was just a short one but i just wanted to show you this thing before we um, before we get out there and and um, start using it because it's harder to demo it from a car so i'll just show you the operation from the car rather than all this setup and the unboxing and stuff and uh, if you enjoyed this video make sure you click the like button and if you haven't already subscribed then make sure you click subscribe and stay tuned for part two guys thanks so much for watching we'll catch you in the next one cheers